I just learned about a new word, Foxweiser. And that's for a fail so big and epic that nobody can deny it. And of course, it's 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 a combination of our two most recent epic fails that I've got fresh information on for you. I'm talking about Fox News firing Tucker Carlson. Well, though they haven't actually fired him, they just took a show away. And of course, uh, Budweiser hiring that uh, very ridiculous man uh, for a, a, a influencing their their Bud Light sales, um, gentlemen. Uh, I just got in the two weeks of ratings for uh, for fo- actually three weeks of ratings for Fox News. The last week that Tucker Carlson was in, and then the first week he was gone, which which didn't really count. Uh, I mean, ratings were down, but uh, Friday night was the NFL draft, and a lot of that audience that would normally be tuned into Fox News was was watching the NFL draft. So I had to wait another week before I could get into the story because what would happen to Fox News uh, after Tucker and after the NFL draft, and I got to tell you guys, it's a bloodbath. Um, in that 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 choice 8 p.m. slot that Tucker used to uh, to have, comparing week to week uh, without the NFL draft, the audience has dropped almost 60 percent in the 8 p.m. in the 8 p.m. time slot. Uh, Tucker had uh, what was it? Uh, let's see. 2.65 million viewers in his last week. Demo viewers. That's 25 to 54. Uh, in his last week at Fox, and this 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 most recent week, Monday through Friday, uh, 1.28 million, and it's it it's killing their whole their whole primetime lineup. Uh, uh, Sean Hannity in the in the next hour, his ratings are way down. Laura Ingraham in the hour after that, her ratings are way down. Um, Bill, I think Fox's problems go beyond firing Tucker Carlson because what they did was. Again, for the second time since calling Arizona early in 2020, was betrayed their their customers to soil their brand. Um, what do you do, probably beyond that 8 p.m. time slot, to turn that around? I'd rehire Tucker Carlson, uh, but <laughs> he's going to ask for a uh, lot more money. You know, you 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 called. You know, well, you, you better pay it because right. you're, obviously that's not going to happen. So you called it Fox Wiser, and I remember. Looking back on the Bud Light thing, they had been doing woke commercials for quite a while before then. They did a gay marriage commercial three, four, five years ago for Bud Light and so on. I think it was a combination of Dylan Mulvaney, but I think an awful lot of the outrage at Bud Light was that uh, woman vice president, basically, you know, uh, you know, super elitist liberal woman talking about how her her clientele were a bunch of you know frat boy, you know, out of touch losers. I think that actually really made people more angry than anything else. I bring her up because I thought, oh, awesome. She's going to spend the next 30 years as the biggest example of fail in business history. And it turns out she only lasted like three weeks. Yeah. Uh, and then and then Fox fires uh, Tucker Carlson. So, Steve, there's no repairing this. It, it, this this episode is, we don't know what, what topics are going to be when we do these shows now. Uh, and it shows. Uh, but, but, <laughs> My my uh, topic this week is somewhat similar to this. Um, you have to decide which side of the culture war you're on. And Fox News became so powerful because they were the only voice that was on the – forget the right side or the wrong side. Forget even left and right. They were the only outlet on the other side of the argument. And when you have half of the country divided one way, half the country divided the other way, and one side of the country has five or six different outlets and the other side has one – you're on to something yeah. that you should sit there and you should protect that and enlarge that and, and, and count the money when they coming fire. In. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. So, so look, there, there's no rational explanation for why they fired Tucker Carlson. It, he was not in the middle of a public controversy like, like Bill O'Reilly was. There was no heat. Apparently one of these, uh, I don't know if it was the son of, I don't know, Murdoch's somebody, I don't know, but, Apparently, they just decided he said something they didn't like, and so they decided to fire him. And and it's comes a point when you have to say, to, if you're the Fox News executive, I may not personally like this, but this is the product. This is what we're selling. And I personally think that you should be proud of the product that you're selling because you're trying to sell the truth. Now, you can explore around the edges of the truth where things are not quite as well known as, as some other things, but that's how you find out what's true. So I, I can't – there's no – business explanation for it, unless 
you start looking a little deeper under the surface. Now, I don't know how this plays out for Fox, but I know that with Bud Light, with Budweiser, uh, Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch was sold to a, uh, was it a, a, a The Belgian Dutch company? Belgian, or? yeah. Belgian. InBev, I think. Okay, right. And and now they're, they're the World Economic Fund and, and BlackRock and all the rest are making financial restrictions on large corporations in terms of loans and all the rest of this stuff predicated on how socially proactive they are. And so I, I think in the case of both Bud Light and um, Fox and Disney, when we look at the economic damage that they've done to the brand, we're seeing the harm that's visible, but we're not seeing what is compensating for this under the table in terms of what these trillion-dollar investors are, are doing and, and pushing. The real question is, why are why – are, I know why the World Economic Forum, but why are BlackRock and, and, and there's this advertising conglomerate, it's, a, it's like all the biggest, biggest companies in the world, they also have a, was a DEI kind of score, whatever they call it now, it's some, something slightly different. And so you say, wow, look at this, this brand lost, you know, $8 billion of, of product value for Budweiser, but you don't know if if they made either some of that back or actually ended up in the long run, making more money because they've complied with this left-wing agenda and and gotten themselves, you know, long-term sweet financial deals. But Fox News should have been immune to this, and yeah. and it's depressing. Frankly. Yeah, it really is. And uh, let me get to the uh, the Budweiser thing because. Uh, <coughs> Most of these uh, these boycotts they they generate some some heat on social media and not much happens in the marketplace but uh, it's it's happening fourth week in a row Bud Light sales are uh, are down I just saw let's see I think I uh, saved this yeah the country's number one selling beer brand saw its in store sales of seventy one point six million dollars last week off twenty three point four percent from the same week in twenty twenty four so this. Uh, this boycott against Bud Light, Scott, seems to have some real legs to it. Um, what do you think is different this time? Well, I, I think there was a way that that Bud uh, advertising executive could have achieved her goal. If she wanted to expand market share, um, she could have actually expanded market share into the, you know, Dylan, what's his name's uh, market segment, let's call it, um, without burning the existing market. And I think that that was the mistake. I mean, I could, I could envision a commercial where you basically have the core bud drinker come into contact with this other kind of bud drinker. Yeah, it could have and, been a cute ad. I can, I can see it yeah, unfolding yeah, already in my mind. At a football stadium yes. and, and, and Dylan and wants to know how the game works. Hey, mind your mind your own damn business live your life kind of ad you know like it's but it's not it's not in your face hey you know the existing bud light drinkers suck and let's get some new ones and stuff like that like you could have merged those audiences in a in a sensitive touching funny way um that would have you know the average bud light drinker going hey yeah go ahead live your life whatever and uh and continue to drink bud light but i think the mistake they made was ticking off their base uh, same situation over at Fox, I mean, it should be no surprise that the mar that the the viewership takes a dive after Tucker Carlson leaves. I mean, Tucker Carlson, this is dating myself extremely, but Tucker Carlson uh, was to Fox News as Gunther Gable Williams was to the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. <laughs> So, you know, he, essentially, Gunther Gable Williams was the name above the title, um, and the people went Lion to the tamer, circus. Right? Yes, he was a he was an animal tamer, large large cat tamer, and uh, so people went to the circus. He was the star, you know. He was Gunther Gable Williams. You were going to see some clowns and high wire acts and stuff like that, but you didn't know the names of any of those people. That was just part of the product. But you really went because you knew that that big brawny, you know, bare chested Gunther Gable Williams was going to be out there intimidating cats. And uh, so, you know, you drop that guy, and then you've got to replace him with somebody else who has that kind of draw. And, and you know, Sean Hannity is in the September of his years, in my personal opinion. And uh, for, for me, he was always in the September of his years. Uh, yeah. Laura Ingram, same kind of situation. Um, you know, two people who have long track records and talent and built audiences and stuff like that, but they didn't have that kind of that rise and sustained audience that, that Tucker had. So, and, and here's what I think is the core problem with both Budweiser and Fox. 
it's it's dishonesty. Um, it's yep. being it's being disingenuous. And to put it baldly, when Fox News comes out and says, oh, we've decided to part ways with Tucker and we wish him the best, that the word for that is lie. <laughs> <laughs> that is not that is not what happened. And you're a news organization. You can't stand up in front of the world and say, we just canned our number one draw who brings the most viewers to our station. And we're going to tell our trusted viewers who trust us to tell them the truth that the reason was no reason. That we just, just part, a mutual, we just, just decided to walk ways. the ways. Yeah, when clearly it was not. So your whole, you, you know, your whole credibility is on you being the truth-telling network while those other weasels in the media are lying, and and they just completely blew that. Yeah, they sure did. That's why I think. Oh, Bill, go ahead. That's why I think uh, when um, when the Crowder Daily Wire thing blew up, I think that's why Jeremy's response was so effective. It, it goes to exactly what Scott said. Jeremy didn't come out and say, oh, well, you know, we don't know who he's talking about, but we, we love Steve Wisham the best. He he deconstructed the, the, the contract. Now, you have a, most people have an opinion one way or another, but just in line with what Scott was saying, he went and addressed it point by point by point right up front without any artifice and that kind of thing is like the Tylenol thing, right? Yes. Somebody's poisoning yeah. our drugs. You can say, well, you know, it's a very rare chance you're going to get it. Or Most you can stand up and Tylenol say- Tylenol are good for you. <laughs> yep. But this guy's going to say, hey, I don't know why I picked Tylenol, but he did. We're pulling every single bottle off the shelf. And, and this is like Coke Zero. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, like, New uh, like New Coke and Bud Light now. This is a classic business school example of how to do it the right way. Yeah, what's uh, there's a real tell. I forgot to include this detail when I was setting up Scott's question. Um, uh, beverage sales, whether you're, whether you're talking about beer or uh, or soft drinks, is a uh, a real market share game where they, they they fight viciously over fractions of percentages of market share. That could mean zero zero sum millions game millions yeah. of dollars exactly zero sum game. And Anheuser-Busch, I think on, on Monday of this week, said that global sales were only down 1%. Well, this is a market mm -hmm. share game. 1% is yeah. hard because you lost it for no good reason. And the scramble to fight uh, to fight and win that 1% back is going to be a brutal and expensive process. And so far, um, uh, Anheuser-Busch InBev has been completely tone deaf. On, on how to fix that. Um, so 1% global sales might not sound like a big deal, but remember, it's a market share game. 1% is a, a massive deal. Um, I just like to, as long as we're, we're, we're talking about screw-ups, I'd like to talk about one of my own. When Vodka Pun, it was just a pure blog before I was a senior columnist at PJ Media. Um, I had a regular column called Mea Culpa, in which I'd explain how I, I screwed something up and say, this is what I did, and I'm going to try not to do it this way again. I'll find an entirely new you. way to screw it up next time. And when the uh, Bud Light fiasco first hit about a month ago, I wrote a column over at PJ Media saying that, uh, well, this is, this is not a huge deal. They'll they'll ride this out, whatever. And, and let me tell you how I screwed this up, because clearly this boycott is real and has staying power. Um, I believed one vital detail from that marketing exec, the woman whose name I can never remember, Amy somebody, I think. Nobody can remember her name. Yeah, yeah. she described Bud Light as a dying brand and That's that right. uh, this was her way of, of marketing to uh, to a new market. And I thought, well, okay, it's it's definitely a niche market, but if you have a dying brand, it, a, a niche market can, can work. Bud Light's not a dying brand. Or at least it, it wasn't a dying brand and, <laughs> until very recently. And, and that one little detail, that's, that, I should not have believed that. I should have looked more closely at that. So that's what I'm going to do next time to try and fix my screw-up. Um, but I did start to wonder why she would say such a thing uh, that's so clearly wrong. And uh, just doing some, some armchair psychoanalysis here i've got a i've got a hypothesis it's nowhere near a theory it's just way ways below that but my hypothesis is this everybody likes to be the hero of their own story and if she can tell a yes. story that bud light is a dying brand and her marketing and genius saved it 
I think we've yeah, got absolutely. the explanation for what went wrong at Anheuser-Busch. Whether or not they can fix it, whether or not they can claw back that 1%, well, they're going to have to show the kind of uh, honesty and self-criticism that I just showed, and so far we've seen no sign of that. All right, that's your, uh, your right angle on the big fail. Thanks so much for watching. For Bill Whittle and Scott Ott, I'm Steve Green. We'll see you next time.